Ubuntu was founded in 2004 by Canonical. Canonical's backing comes from billionaire Mark Shuttleworth. It also derives revenue from selling commercial support and donations. Ubuntu is a fixed-release Linux distribution with discrete six-month release points. Once installed, your system will only receive security updates for specific applications and components for the life of the distribution. Long-term support releases are released once every two years and are supported for five years, with optional pay-for support to extend further beyond the five-year point. Interim releases are supported for just nine months. There is an official upgrade path between releases of Ubuntu, with the preference being to retain users on the LTS releases. Arch Linux was founded in 2002 by developer Judd Vinette. Funding comes from community donations and partnerships with Velocity Network and Cartagena, who provide hosting services for the Arch Linux servers. Arch Linux is a rolling release, meaning that once installed, your system will remain close to the bleeding edge throughout its life. Ubuntu focus on three specific interfaces, server, which has no desktop, but can be managed through the optional Ubuntu landscape management tool. There is also Unity 7 for desktop and laptop systems, and Unity 8 for mobile and tablet. In the future, Unity 8 will supersede Unity 7, but at time of recording, Canonical are offering both desktops in their x86-based install of Ubuntu. In terms of system architecture, Ubuntu offer 32 and 64-bit, as well as ARM. There are many different official and unofficial derivatives of Ubuntu, which gives you the ability to choose from a wide range of Linux desktops. Arch don't really offer a specific interface as such. The system is very much build it yourself and you can choose from a larger range of Linux desktops than you will find on Ubuntu. I know this fact from bitter experience when I was putting together the Desktop December series, and most of the desktops were available within the Arch repositories. Compared to Ubuntu and Debian, where they either had to be compiled or installed from a third-party repository. In terms of system architecture, Arch only offer 64-bit. At time of recording, 32-bit is in support-only mode and will be totally unsupported by November 2017. For ARM systems, there is a port of Arch Linux available which caters to that specific architecture. There's a few unofficial derivatives of Arch, including Manjaro, Apricity, Antigos, and OB Revenge. Ease of install. Ubuntu comes with a simple point-and-click Ubiquity graphical installer, that is very kind and forgiving to new users. Installation of Ubuntu can be carried out either online or offline. Arch is entirely command line for the system installer. There are guides on the Arch wiki in order to assist with installation. The first time I tried, it was very time consuming and confusing. Didn't help the noobs guide was missing at the time. Installation is dependent on having an internet connection. For an experienced user, the hands-on command line approach will not present any difficulty at all. If a user has built themselves a custom script, then it could well be quicker to install Arch than Ubuntu. Most of the derivatives of Arch come with the Universal Calamares graphical installer, which makes installation as easy as Ubuntu's Ubiquity installer. Help me! Canonical provide Ubuntu forums and Ask Ubuntu online community support. Arch provide a community maintained wiki, which is superb, and I have utilised it on many, many occasions, even if I need help for another distribution. The Arch help pages are often relevant, or at least provide you an approximate location for a configuration change. You have the different audience to consider. Ubuntu catering for newer users and providing the more human touch versus Arch catering for more experienced users and providing the more technical touch. Both are winners in this section as they provide a perfect help solution to their respective user base. Packaging. Ubuntu uses the Debian packaging utilities apt and dpkg to install deb files which contain pre-compiled binaries. Command line interface is relatively simple. 
and there is a GUI utility called Synaptic, which can be used to install and remove packages, as well as adding third-party repositories. Ubuntu utilise the GNOME Software Center on their desktop, which is fancier than Synaptic, but not as feature-rich. Canonical have been driving forward with a new universal packaging format called Snaps. Snaps provide both the application and all its dependencies in one package. It potentially means you can have multiple copies of the same library files on your system if they are used within different Snaps. There is an unofficial GUI for installing Snaps with SnapWeb. However, it is certainly not as convenient as Snaptic or any of the desktop-specific package managers. Traditional package management in Linux allows for only one copy of a package to be installed, which is more efficient on space. However, forcing an upgrade of an individual component through third-party repositories can break the delicate balance of version control. Arch uses Pacman to install tar.xz compressed precompiled binaries. Command line interface is not quite as simple as apt, but there are a couple of GUIs, Octopi and Pamac. The number of packages in the official Arch repository is rather low, at around 15,000, compared to the 55,000 available in Ubuntu. However, adding in the AUR Arch user repositories adds another 39,000 to the total, which is comparable to the quantity available for the standard Ubuntu repository. Canonical provide Launchpad, an open source project hosting service, which allows you to further expand the number of available applications to Ubuntu. It also allows you to obtain newer versions of certain applications, which does have the potential downside of causing breakage due to conflict of versions, as I mentioned earlier. Another aspect I would like to cover with packages is the build quality, how well all the dependencies are linked. From feedback I have received, there seems to be fewer issues with dependencies in applications on Arch. In particular with the KDE desktop, where it seems to be a smoother running experience and can execute GTK-based applications more cleanly than Kubuntu and KDE Neon, which are both Ubuntu-based distributions seems to me that the Arch maintainers have done a better job with getting package dependencies linked correctly compared to the Ubuntu and Debian maintainers. Overall, there is no clear winner in terms of packaging. Both have advantages and disadvantages compared to each other. Resource usage. Difficult to get a fair comparison of resource usage since Arch doesn't come with a specific desktop. Although to be fair, the resources utilized by the desktop is just one component of the overall memory usage of a Linux system. What we can tell is Arch just loads the kernel modules and drivers specific to your system. Boot up speed on Arch on a rotational drive is about on par with Ubuntu booting off a solid state disk. My experience of Arch with Manjaro and Obi Revenge utterly tramples all over the performance of Ubuntu and KD Neon. Not to say I've ever felt Ubuntu is slow, it is simply that Arch is faster. On the other hand, you could say my system boots a few seconds quicker. Now I just need to keep it going for 10 years or so, and I'll have made back the hours I spent learning how to install Arch. Kernel choice. Arch make it easy to switch between different Linux kernels. They offer a choice of a brand new vanilla kernel with few patches applied a long-term support kernel, and two other Arch-specific kernels, GRSEC and Zen. GRSEC offers increased security. The Zen kernel is the result of a collaborative effort of kernel hackers to provide the best Linux kernel possible for everyday systems. The Linux kernel in Ubuntu is fixed at the version released during the beta development and Canonical supply security updates to the kernel throughout the life of the distribution. For the LTS releases of Ubuntu, it is possible to obtain a newer kernel with the LTS enablement stack, which provides an updated kernel for the life of the distro it comes with. But that means the operating system can outlive the kernel, and it is up to the user to switch to a new LTS enablement stack. Canonical also supply new kernels through the mainline PPA. 
and you can obtain the latest release candidate and stable builds of the Linux kernel. However, this is a manual process and up to the user to maintain on their own system. Arch is definitely the winner for ease of switching and obtaining the latest kernel. Package updates. As it is a rolling release, Arch maintainers update all packages within the official Arch repository on a regular basis based on upstream builds. Regular to the point that you can install all your updates, go have a cup of coffee, and then upon return, you may need to do even more updates. Although it is not necessarily wise to update your own system multiple times throughout the day. However, you will need to be somewhat regular with your system updates. Frequent updates can necessitate more frequent reboots, likely a big no-no on production servers where the required downtime for a reboot simply isn't available. In comparison, Ubuntu only updates a core selection of applications and components of the system that could pose a severe security risk if left unpatched. They can be identified in Synaptic Package Manager if you look for the packages with the Ubuntu logo next to them. These are updated throughout the life of the distribution. All other packages are held at a fixed version based on the upstream Debian builds at time of development. Generally, security updates will only result in a specific vulnerability being patched, rather than a newer version of an application being supplied. One exception is web browsers, which do receive a whole new version with additional features. There is one application I have never understood for receiving security updates, the password cracking tool, John the Ripper. Hmm. In my opinion, Ubuntu should be favored for enterprise and server environments, but that is not to say Arch should be excluded entirely, because no doubt there is a sysadmin somewhere who has installed Arch throughout the company, and everything is just fine. In conclusion, Arch is technically the better distribution. However, from an ease of pick up and use, Ubuntu is the winner. Quite simply, there is no way I could recommend the average Windows or Mac OS user make their first experience of Linux with Arch. Yes, there will always be exceptions to the rule, but for the most part, it is like seeing a child take their first steps. Then you turn to them and say, well done, now go run a marathon. For more experienced Linux users, Arch is definitely a worthy distribution to consider. If you like my videos, then please consider being a Patreon and support Quids Up. You can pledge as little as $1 a month or $1,000 a month. It's up to you, but every little bit does make a difference, and it does help me produce higher quality videos. Thanks for watching, and as always, I will see you all later.